Hi, everybody. It is Wednesday, April 3rd, and you're here at the DEI Working Group Meeting for Chaos. I'm Elizabeth. Good to see everybody here. Some familiar faces. My dog's snoring as usual in the background. <laughs> I wish I had her life. Like, literally. Like, yeah, no, it's, a, it's a, do a dog's life is not a bad one. It's really not, especially my dog's lives. Yeah. Um, yeah, so if you want to put in your name, just tell us what you had for breakfast. That was about as creative as I could get today. I just had a little protein shake thing. I normally I think. don't even eat breakfast. So I got lucky because I did on a rare occasion eat breakfast and then you asked. So that's why I asked. Well, Donna, I, knew it. I knew it was a special day. <laughs> yeah. I had a toast too. That sounds super yummy. <laughs> I, I, in contrast, always have to have breakfast or I get really grumpy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's a thing. Like either you wake up and you're super hungry and you need to eat or you're like, eh, I'll ease into the day. Um, yeah, so if you anybody needs the minutes, we can certainly drop them in the chat again. Not a problem. And we'll just jump into the agenda. So first thing is I wanted to remind everybody that we are not having any meetings the week of April 15th. Just take a little break. That's the week of OSSNA. So a lot of chaotics will be out there. We also have ChaosCon that week. And then sometimes it's just nice to take a little break. I'm, all, I'm a big fan of breaks. So um, yeah, so no meetings week of April 15th. And it's been reflected on the calendar. So if you are subscribed, it should also be reflected on your version of the calendar as well. But if you have copied this meeting into yours, make sure you change that yourself. Open Source Summit is not a break. It's like doing triple time. I know, I know, but at least we don't have to also like worry about chaos meetings, at least for me anyway, I don't have to worry about any of that. Um, yeah, I can only do one thing at one time. I'm not that good. <laughs> I should actually, I should actually petition for the week after OSSNA to be the week that we have no meetings, I think would be good because <laughs> I usually need a little bit of a, a reset after I travel like that. Um, any questions on this? Okay, let's go on. Um, I just want to say hello and welcome and you're awesome to MOA winner and Gloria. They've gone through the new Badger orientation and signed up to be new Badgers for us. So yay. Um, and also just a shout out to Arinka who is doing an amazing job helping me, <laughs> helping me like sort through all these applications. We're still getting quite a few. So Arinka has been um, assigning the badgers, running all of the, um, the commands to issue the badges, just keeping up with everything. It's uh, Arinka, you're doing a fantastic job. So thank you so much for that. I really appreciate you. Um, we will run another, I, we did record the one yesterday and the other one we did the other other week last week I think so if somebody is interested and didn't wasn't able to attend um just let me know and I'll share the recording with you and we had a few people who came in late and um also had to leave early so uh, I'll be sharing them in slack as well but if you need that just let me know okay let's jump to the next one I don't know if Mary Blessing, I don't see her on here. Okay, she's not on here, so I will just represent. So we're trying to start this ambassador program just to give people another way to contribute and to also um, be more visible and advocate on behalf of chaos in you know, the, uh, the public setting. So we're starting, we've just very, very, very early in the process, just throwing some ideas together we have this doc, we would absolutely love some input from others on this, especially anybody who's had experience with an ambassador program. I know we have a few um, in a few chaotics here that are in other open source projects that have ambassador programs. So not that we want to, you know, do what everybody else is doing all the time. It's always nice to learn from others uh, who have already learned the lessons, so, so we don't have to. But um, I'm also a fan of just kind of doing uh, something creative and new also. So um, I don't know that we need to necessarily completely clone what someone else is doing, but um, maybe a nice balance there would be good. So we just dropped again, just dropped our ideas in this doc. Would love some thoughts on this. We can take time today to look through it, or we can just, you know, as you get a second, just look at it later, whatever you all want to do. I think we have a couple other things. Oh, yeah, we were going to work on the code of conduct enforcement metric, but I think Matt has been really instrumental in that. And he's not here today, so 
Um, yeah, I don't know. What do you, what do we feel like? How's our brain power today? What do, do we feel like looking at this, talking about it right now? Which one? The ambassadors. <clears throat> yeah, let's look at it. So what we're trying to do uh, is, again, give people a, an opportunity to contribute, but also um, allow others to help us spread the good word of chaos and what we're trying to do here. So essentially, we would want to um, bring loop in. We were thinking um, we would first include the community managers working group. We have a Slack channel, but we don't have regular meetings. It's very um, async the way that group works. Um, Mary Blessing and myself are co-chairs of that group. So we thought maybe that would be a good place to start um, to help them uh, help uh, help invite them to help us build this pro program and to be some of the first ambassadors. Um, we would want to train them. Maybe we could keep a calendar of all the uh, open CFPs. Um, we already have this uh, slide templates and things like that. <clears throat> we would need to get them some stickers. Who are you targeting there? Are you targeting the person who's maintaining a specific open source project or is that a more finite group? I think we can target um, organizations, um, contributors, and maintainers. By organizations, I think my blessing meant like OSPOs or others, or you know, universities, people in our okay. our context groups. Um, I think this would mostly happen through conferences, though. I feel like those that would be the place where we would be doing this advocacy. So it wouldn't be like, hey, uh, Microsoft, we want to come into your company and do this presentation. It would be more like, hey, OSSNA, we want to come in here and do your do a presentation. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I, think. Yeah, I think I was envisioning that it would be pick your open source project and reach out to who, like something that's a little more established, not something being maintained by a lone person, but say, hey, open source project, you're the open source maintainer or leader of this particular project benevolent dictator for life whatever it is and we'd like you to be an ambassador and be part of this group but it sounds like it's a little broader than that oh i see what your question is now so the people we would target to be ambassadors would be chaotic in the community management working group so we would be oh, okay. doing outreach to uh, like the rest of the world of like Hey, here's chaos. Here's what we do. Here's our metrics. Come join us, kind of a thing. Oh, okay, okay. At Thanks least that's what I think. <laughs> Rhea, I could be totally wrong. I think that's what. Um, I didn't know. I just I that's know. why I was happy. Is I just wasn't quite sure what the target group was for that. Yeah, yeah. And I think we should also, you know, think well beyond conferences because where I've seen like the CNCF ambassadors, for example, be really effective is in creating like videos, for example, where they they showcase um, the stuff that they do with certain, in, in our case, like CNCF projects. In this case, it could be, you know, showcase some of the work that they do with, with metrics, for example. So like videos and podcasts and blog posts, I think are are probably where we'll get the most activity. Like conferences are great, but you know, it's harder to get in conferences. Anybody can anybody can write blog posts and record videos and do all of that on, on their own. And I think that's where some of the ambassadors are most effective. I love that. And I think that's right in line with kind of what we were thinking about the the guides and tutorials and, and doing case studies and probably working with you a lot, Don, I would imagine, um, you know just to, to showcase some of the the things that you've seen and some of the people who are actually using the metrics and um some that might be like a good partnership between you and the ambassadors mm -hmm. um <clears throat> or really anybody you know sean you too or, or um, folks in grimoire lab like really anybody who wants to help spread the word of something cool that they've seen um could maybe reach out to the ambassadors so yeah i would i think you know if it if it's about getting some people familiar with how to use the software it would be great to spend some time with the ambassadors just to show them what's available and how to guide people toward its use yeah i love it so i would uh yeah i if there's a 
context that exists. So are, do we have people who have been identified as ambassadors at this point? No, not yet. Not okay. yet. We're talking about the community management group, but yeah. we don't have any specific folks yet. This is super early. Yeah. So I think, I think um, I like this. Here's what we were thinking of criteria. So people that um, have been in chaos for a little bit, who kind of understand how the community works and what we do here. Uh, <clears throat> we put in have done some public speaking. I don't know if I don't know how I feel about this one. I, I could be swayed otherwise. But we were thinking like if someone is going to be representing chaos, like on a more official way, then maybe this would be a good requirement. Maybe maybe to state that they are either experienced or keen to learn about public speaking. And I'm not so is it really important if some of this is asynchronous mentoring and guidance as well, that's perhaps less critical. If it's less <laughs> event driven. And I think I think one of the things, the one thing that you do need to be a little bit careful about with with these ambassador programs are that these people are representing your project. Yeah. Um, so we have, and so I'm part of, um, yeah, so several organizations I'm involved in have ambassadors and we, we had one where this person was approved as an ambassador and just turned out to be kind of a, kind of a terrible, um, ambassador, person. um, just a terrible person, just like, oh. I like violate code of conduct all over the place. Mm. Um, nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so I would say that the criteria I, I wouldn't worry about the public speaking. I would say that they have to have some audience of some sort, um, whether their audience is, um, you know, because we want them to be, you know, talking to to their audiences, right? So they need to have some sort of a, some sort of an audience. Um, I don't, that could be a lot of blog posts or demos or, or something that's not necessarily public speaking. I don't want people to feel excluded because they, aren't um you know they aren't interested in public speaking for example mm -hmm. there's lots of other ways they can evangelize it but i would put in some some criteria of you know must be i don't even know what the criteria would be but something about upholding the chaos values and and code of conduct um something in there should be part of the criteria yeah i like that a lot I, I'm also wondering if we could have, how do I add this? Okay, let me just put it up here. Um, must uh, adhere to code of conduct. I wonder if there's, <clears throat> excuse me, some way we could do like a, an ambassador in training maybe, or like some other level for folks who want to do mm -hmm. it and just haven't had that opportunity to build the audience or to like get into this at all. Um, and it might be like, okay, before you can be a full ambassador, regardless who you are, you have to go through like an ambassador in training or or something to like kind of test the waters a little bit with that person. I don't know. Would that help? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's like a mentoring program in a way that you're talking about. Yeah, so like you, uh, yeah. you were an ambassador in training and then you would evolve to a full ambassador and help mentor the new ambassador in training. So it's like a, a pipeline kind of thing. What do we think? Yeah, about? I think that's I think that's really important. Um, I think it'll make it uh, smooth. Once we identify those initial ambassadors who can serve in that mentoring role, I think at that point it it becomes a, a small core group that can mentor a larger group, and and I think that will keep some consistency in the ambassadorness or the practices of ambassadors. That's probably useful. Yeah, so if you look at the CNCF ambassador application process, I'm just gonna drop the link in the chat. Um, I think that might help a lot because it has it has things like like the responsibilities because um, here's, here's the problem. Everybody wants to be an ambassador and then they don't necessarily do anything with it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we do need to be clear about what their, um, what their responsibilities are so, you know, for the CNCF, it's things like, you know, provide input and feedback to the CNCF about, you know, the things that they've done to promote the technologies to, you know, attract and onboard new community members is one of the responsibilities of the ambassadors. So I think that there's lots of, lots of, uh, 
responsibilities uh, that they have. And then, you know, the requirements, if you, if you look at that just below, it says things like, you know, willing to review and sign the ambassador standards of excellence every year, which I think is yeah. how they get around the, just not being, not being a nice person. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it has things like, you know, you you have to be active, active in the community. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think I think it has a lot of a lot of stuff that we can kind of crib from. Yeah, I like this a lot. Um, okay, let's do uh, let's add that up here too. Um, I like that a lot. I really like too how clearly the um, the responsibilities are defined. Mm -hmm. I see that they're also kind of helping with um, community management right here. So in answer to your question, Kevin, is this a marketing position? I, I would say yes and community management because it's going beyond, at least in the way the CNCF is using it, it's going beyond just outreach, it's actually also helping build um, build community in internally. Yeah, I mean, and and the 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 CNCF ones are more like developer advocates than mm -hmm. marketing or necessarily community management. But certainly, I suppose a bit of a bit of both is kind of implied in in that kind of position. Kevin asked, "Do we still have a marketing group?" I don't think we do. I mean, I don't know who would be in that group besides like us <laughs> you know, i don't know i don't know who would be in that group i don't think um venya has been around for a while and i think she was kind of the one driving it so she's off getting her phd in australia right now <laughs> so i don't i don't think without like having someone driving it i don't think we have a group someone can disagree maybe the group is around and i just don't know about it i i do not think the group is around i don't think there's anything you don't know about. Okay. <laughs> you never what's know. The, uh, what's the ab advocacy part of this? Uh, you mentioned the CMC is about developer advocacy. Uh, is that uh, what what would be the advocacy component to uh, chaos and masters? It, it would be it would be just advocating for the project. So you know, letting people know that chaos exists, that we have metrics, that we have software and what you can do with them. Developer okay. advocacy is like a job title. Um, okay, so it's more project advocacy is more descriptive or? Maybe developer advocacy is like the job title that a lot of these people have that end up as ambassadors is the reason okay. I kind of mentioned it. Or developer, developer experience is another job title that goes along with that. But don't don't get too hung up on the word developer. I was just using that as an example. It's okay. it's really just evangelists is kind of what we used to call them, I guess. Okay, this is great. I don't want to spend the whole meeting on this, but this is awesome. Uh, Mary Blessing and I will take this back to the. So I think this this program will be built in the uh, community manager working group. And that if anybody wants to join that uh, channel, like I said, it's all, um, it's all, what is the name of this? Chaos Community Managers, just Community Managers, okay. Um, <clears throat> it's all async, so there are no meetings right now. Um, my blessing and I are the co-chairs of it. We just do everything in Slack. Um, so if you want to be part of this, building it out, or you know, express interest in being an ambassador or something, then pop in there and we'll chat about it. Yeah, be and I brought it to this group specifically. We, we talked about it yesterday in the community meeting, but I brought it to this group specifically because I want to make sure that we're covering our bases with like making sure it's um, it's equitable and inclusive and all of those good things. So we don't want it to be. Uh, I don't think we want it to be like the usual suspects, if I can say that. Like, I think it yeah, needs no, I think it needs to be more, more representative. Yeah. yeah. 
<clears throat> oh, man. Yeah, we might we might want to do a pilot with a smaller number of people to see how it goes and refine it before we open it up to that's a good uh, idea and if we did a pilot it, it might be good to pick some of the usual suspects who could um who could start this and because then they can help onboard new ambassadors but you know if we just kind of started with with a sort of a free-for-all anybody who wants to do it it might not be it might be harder to manage and it doesn't give us it doesn't give us much of an opportunity to refine things if we realize that some of the stuff that we planned isn't isn't working for whatever reason well, how many how many ambassadors do we really need i would mm. i would think the uh the more we have the uh less control we would have over the message well that's where i su my suggestion is to start with these mentors and that keeps it small right yeah and my guess would be we probably we probably wouldn't ever need more than you know three or four ambassadors. Well, so so Open UK is a much smaller organization than we are, and uh, they have I don't know fifty ambassadors. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, if we're talking about folks who can also write not just public speaking, but like writing these wow. blog posts, doing these case studies and videos and everything. I mean, I don't think there could be a limit. Like, I mean, as long as it you know as long I mean it's. As long as we give them templates and some kind of guidance, then um, yeah. Okay. And these are also people that you know. So we you know we can create an ambassador Slack channel, for example. And whenever we do something interesting within the Chaos Project or release a you know blog post, podcast, things like that, um, you know, in the other organizations that I belong to, they would post those to the ambassador channel and say, hey, you know, can you share this with your with your audience? Oh. Okay, so the, the purpose is to amplify social media, or one of the primary purposes is to amplify social media channels. I would say that's one of the things you can use them for. I wouldn't say it's the primary one. I would say the primary one is getting them to create their own content that um, they can use with, with their audience to get the chaos message out beyond what we normally would. Yeah. Yeah, so con so okay, so responsibilities might be like content creation, um, public speaking, and what else we said up here. Yeah. We have other examples. I'm going to keep bringing up the two that I'm involved in. I, we had another doc somewhere that had a bunch of um, links to other ambassador programs, but I don't know that I actually really took a deep dive on them. So this is super helpful, Don, to have your actual experience on these. I'll just link this to you. So they have a lot. Oh, yeah, here's benefits. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Open UK one is pretty loosey goosey, um, and that's the one that we've had some problems with. I see. Necessarily, should, who never really should have been ambassadors gotcha. um, being approved. But some of these are fantastic, like Anais um, Orex, one of those top pictures. She's amazing. Yeah, I mean, um, chaos in general is pretty, I wouldn't say loosey goosey, but um, like we're pretty, you know, inclusive, friendly, whatever. I'm not, you know, very corporate-y like a corporate uh, developer advocacy group would be. So I want to, I, I, I think maybe we can strike a balance between being like super tight and um, strict and, you know, yeah. it must be this. And then like the super loosey goosey, like I think we're somewhere in the middle. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're somewhere between the CNCF and the and Open UK. Yeah. Where would I put that? Uh, I'm just gonna put this up here. Somewhere between CNCF and Open UK. Okay. Awesome. Uh, much more on the Open UK side. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> 
like CNCF is like. I mean, the CNCF, up. the CNCF has had to clamp down on things because um, too many people want to be ambassadors, and so they they have very strict criteria about what you have to do, and if you don't do it, you get kicked out of the ambassador program. And so I don't see us as being like like that. No, no, we're we're pretty small. We don't we don't have any famous people. Oh, sorry, Mary Blessing has her hand up. Oh yeah. Um, hi everyone. So I wanted I wanted to like um, get everyone's thoughts on the ambassador tenure and um, um, also speaking of um, you know not following procedure and being removed. Like, how would that look like for the chaos ambassador program as well? I don't think we really like defined that. Yeah, that's kind of a blank in our in our pr proposal here. Um, yeah. did, Don, how did that like you? You've probably seen that happen in a few cases. It sounds like so. Like, is it a vote or is it like something we would take to the board or like how would what would you think would be a good idea here? Just based on your experience or anybody else who has had experience with this. That's a good question. I don't I don't actually know how the removals um, happened. Um, if I had to guess, so the CNCF has, you know, some people who run the ambassador program. I'm guessing that it's whoever runs the program probably makes decisions. I would I would say that we. Um, yeah, I don't know. In the case of Open UK, I, um, it this one instance did go to the board, I think, but that was there was there was all kinds of circumstances around that issue that wasn't a traditional kind of removal. Sean, get your hand up. I would suggest let's get the program off the ground and address removal later. No, you gotta no. have you no. So so this is something that happens in governance. Everybody wants to address removal later, and then it becomes impossible to remove people who are um, behaving badly. We've we've seen this in open source projects where um, there was a a steering committee member who was um, posting anti-trans stuff all over the internet um, and they couldn't remove him because they had no mechanism of doing so. And that was all kinds of not fun. Yeah. So I think I think we can put something simple in place which says, you know, if you're if you're not upholding the chaos code of conduct and the chaos values or something that that you can be removed. Now we don't necessarily need to get super specific about it, but um I mean we could leave it up to the code of conduct committee as part of the removal process. But yeah, also think... what if what if they sign up to be an ambassador and never ever ever do anything and just continue to have their name as an ambassador? Um, we need to be able to remove people for any reason. Mm. It could include inactivity. It could include code of conduct violations. Um, well, could we have two prongs to removal then? Perhaps this working group could remove people for inactivity and anything that's code of conduct related would go to the code of conduct committee. And Mary Blessing has her hand up, I believe. Yeah, I do. Uh, but Kevin also has a concern while we're having this conversation here, so I don't even know if I should go forward with this. Yeah, we can. Uh, that's a good question. Does this program live in DEI? Are you... I think it lives in community management. And the only reason I brought it here was just to get a broader perspective as we build this out so that we're making sure we're looking at this through a DEI lens and it's not um, something that looks like it's exclusive or there are barriers to participation that community managers haven't seen. So I just wanted to bring it here and get some input from the group, just like we took, talked about it yesterday in, community man in the community meeting. We just wanted a broader perspective. That's why we're talking about it here. Go ahead, um, Rhea. Uh, or Mary Blessing, I don't know if you finished your thought. No, no, not yet. So um, just similar to what Don had mentioned, right? Um, I was going to also suggest, you know, when ambassadors are like inactive or haven't done anything in a while, 
um, you know, that could be a criteria for removal. However, I was also thinking in the line of maybe giving them grace, um, whereby we notice them not being active and, you know, draw their attention to it. That's the people um, that would be managing the program, draw their attention to it and maybe give them like a timeline. Um, I don't know if this makes sense, but yeah, if they still do not meet up to um, what is expected, it's not like it's a whole lot of expectation from them, then, you know, we can now make a final decision and say, you know what, um, you know, we might have to like relieve you of this role. Um, it's just clearly that your schedule does not fit in at this time. Yeah, I like that. Here, yeah, I can put the text that we use for maintainers. It doesn't directly apply, but it should be something something like this. Oops, wait a minute. But this we this is this is standard. The two thirds vote is standard for maintainer governance, so it would not be not be maintainers. You the know ambassadors. I mean? Yeah. So does are is no, this it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be the ambassadors? Okay. They don't get to remove themselves. One just I'll interject because it may be apropos and it does have pros and cons to it, but you can also have timed ambassadors where it's a one-year term and then you automatically expire and then you don't have to take an action to remove someone but the con to it of course then is if you have a really active ambassador and they expire do they have to take an action to continue being an ambassador what about the word besides expire yeah i think we were thinking um they would serve for they would commit to serving for a year and then after that point they can, can they can decide if they want to continue or or end um what does that sound like does that seem like it would be fair i'm going to look to dawn to see if it sounds enforceable and right honestly i wouldn't i wouldn't worry too much about if we have an inactivity clause then we don't need to worry too much about re-upping these because that creates a barrier right makes it harder for ambassadors to keep their ambassador status and we're not we're not a we're not in demand like the cncf is for example so they do have to kind of re-up um i think we just need to decide and i don't this isn't the right place to make the decision about who gets to make the decision to remove ambassadors okay so i put sort of a placeholder there just yeah, that's but fair. it should be language something like this. Ambassadors can re be removed for these reasons. Um, yeah. I love that. Yeah, I think that makes sense and it's fair and healthy and good. Yeah. And it could be, I mean, who's going to run, who, who, who's going to run this program? Don't know. Um, Project yeah, managers is kind of what I'm sort of hearing, but. I don't know, Mary Blessing, what do you think? Like, should we get should we get someone from community management to run it? Should we get project manager to run it? Yeah, I think um, since it's like lives in the community managers working group, then it would just make sense if um, the CMs also like handle, handle this as part of the initiative they run um, within the chaos project. Okay, that sounds sounds good. Just gonna add that, that doesn't solve the problem of who gets to remove the ambassadors, but I mean, we can we can decide in the community manager group if there's some like a, an owner of it, um, pro a project lead. I think. I mean, maybe we, we have to figure out how this fits into the project governance. So that's the missing piece that we're seeing right now, right? Is yeah. it? Is it a working group, in which case it has a chair? Is it more, or is it more like a chapter, in which case it has a, a lead? Um, can, I, can I come in there, Donna? Yeah. Um, so I think it could be an initiative. You know, the way we have the event budget um, um, within the DI working group. So this could be an initiative 
run within a particular working group. And in this case, I'm thinking the community managers um, working group, right? So I don't think it being a working group or a chapter shoots. Um, yeah. Yeah, the problem, uh, yeah. The problem is if something happens, it can't just be posted in a public Slack channel for people to discuss and decide what happens, right? Yeah, it can't um, be a public Slack channel, that's for sure. So so that's why it needs it just it needs to fit into the governance somehow. I mean, Mary Blessing and I are the co-chairs of the community manager working group. So that could be something that we talk about and then maybe bring to the code of conduct. Yeah, it to Kevin's point, the code of conduct committee, if, if that's like the, the thing that's so bad that we can't talk about it publicly. I yeah. mean, if it's something about inactivity, that's like, okay, you know, but- Inactivity is easier no because you can do that publicly. So that's yeah. what that's what Kubernetes, yeah. they just did a cleanup. I just got kicked out of the Kubernetes org because I don't oh, make yeah. enough contributions. If I'd objected, they would have let me stay, but I had no no means to object. Happy to um, get rid of another responsibility. But what they did, they did they did the whole thing in public. It was like these are the people who appear to be inactive. Um, if you disagree with this, um, you have until this time to you know to let us know. And so we could deal with the inactivity that way. I would just call you. John, could you uh, mute? Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ria, is your yeah, hand still up, up from before? Oh, no, that was up from okay. before. Sorry. I, 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 oh, used, I like, it, oh, no. it automatically lowers for you, so I didn't even bother to lower it. Sorry. So what do we think about that where um, Mary Blessing and Elizabeth as CM co-chairs um, can bring COC violations to the COC committee, which, yeah, what do you, what do we think about that? That seems fair. I think it does seem fair as, I mean, Don has the experience with CNCF. So as long as she thinks it's not out of alignment with anything we would do, then I'd say go. i tell you what, um, just because since we only have 10 minutes left, I really, really, really appreciate everybody's input on this. Mary Blessing does too, I'm I'm sure. How about if Mary Blessing and I kind of clean this doc up, formalize some things that we talked about here, and then um, we'll share it in the community meeting and we can share it here as well, just for some final eyes on it, if that's okay with everybody. That meets with my okayness. <laughs> Seems reasonable. I didn't want to say approval. That sounded really presumptuous. So I pivoted <laughs> okay, really quick yes. at the end there. <laughs> um, that was a good save, Sean. Uh, yeah. And, and in the meantime, feel free to keep adding comments and um, suggestions in this doc as well. Um, we would really appreciate that. Thank you so much, everybody. Mary Blessing, do you have any final thoughts on this? Comments before we move on? No, no, no. 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 <laughs> Um, here is something else we just want to bring up. Um, we talked about this again yesterday in the community meeting. I know there are some folks here that were not there yesterday. So um, we really want this onboarding education, these videos and things to be a community collaborative effort. And it's kind of coming down to those like usual suspects, core people. And um, we really want this to be a community project. So if you have any thoughts or any desire whatsoever to be a part of this and help other newcomers join the project is really what we're trying to do here. Um, please feel free to check this list of issues out. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff you can do on all kinds of topics. Um, and you can also reach out to Peculiar who is on the call today. Um, if you're not sure what you wanna do, you wanna do something but you don't know where to start, just reach out to Peculiar. She will absolutely help you figure out where you belong and what you can do. Um, and then peculiar, I don't know if you have any other kind of words of encouragement <laughs> for people just to try to bring people in. Oh, you already do need to lose weight. Um, yeah, sure. Okay, those are the list of um, 
issues we have there or, uh, for people to grab and to be part of it. Um, we encourage everyone. Okay, so you can, there's so many ways you can participate. You can create a video or you write a script or you can prepare the deck. And we have samples already, see? It's very simple because we already have samples of this. We have a sample, samples for the deck. You just look at the sample, what about two or three people they've done before. You can compare like two or three of them and then you're able to have insight on what you want to do or I mean, how to go about it. Then we also have like the videos that's about already there. So you can, it's easy for you to look at those and then you know how to go about. We also have some scripts that be written and they were just waiting for someone to record the video. It's simple when you have the script, just look at the script and then just record the video accordingly. So we encourage everyone can do that. Feel free to volunteer to be part of it. You can just tag me on any issue and then I will assign it to you. If you can also, we also have form, you can fill up to just specify the issue you want then I will assign it to you. And all those information are just there on the readme. Just take time to go through it. Tag me any, on any issue, then I will just be there to also guide you and help you out. And then for recording, you might not need to use your own like platform to record. I and Elizabeth have a way to help you provide a, a platform where you can use to record and then say do and create our time for you for your recording too. So thank you everyone for joining. I hope to see more input from all of us. And for those also that have assigned, that picked issue or assigned, if you're already, please, I'm trying to encourage you to try it out. You'll have fun doing it, I'm sure. Thank you. There thank are a couple, a couple of things that we might, that we might try. To, to help okay. kickstart this a little bit. Um, one is, you know, like you said, peculiar, there are, there are several scripts that are written and the presentations are written and all somebody needs to do is record the video. Maybe we can take like three of those and post them in the general channel and say, hey, we're looking for three people to record videos on these topics. Here's the scripts, here's everything you need. It'll take you, X number of minutes, probably like five minutes or something like that. Um, so pick some like, maybe like three really quick ones that aren't gonna take somebody much time and post okay. it out on the, the general channel and see if you can get somebody to volunteer. Um, oh, because sorry. if it's right now, this big list of issues is overwhelming for people. Um, <laughs> so they, they don't know, they don't know where to start. And so if we pick a couple and encourage people, and then if that works, we can pick a couple more and continue to encourage people until we have a little more content. Okay. Um, okay. And then That's the other thing idea. we might try is, um, for some of the ones that we don't have scripts and that we don't have any, um, any content for. You know, we might ask specific people that we think might have some insight into those and say and and try to encourage specific people to contribute something. So, you know, for example, if if you had reached out to me and say, hey, Don, you you wrote the governance docs, maybe you should, um, you know, do the governance training, for example, because we can look and see who's written bits of bits of content on things or written a blog post about something and maybe maybe encourage them because we probably have, for a lot of these, we probably have some materials. We can probably find some, some materials on some of these topics and find the person who wrote them and see if we can get them to, to do it. Awesome suggestion. Thank you so much for that. Hopefully it helps. I know, I know this has been hard, Peculiar. This is, it's always hard to get people to do something like this. <laughs> At least at the start. Then when it becomes popular, it'll just come in waves. We just need that critical mass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Don. And Peculiar, I don't know if you saw Dinka ask you to bring this to Chaos Africa tomorrow. Okay, sure. Sure, I'll do that, uh, Dinka. Is the, is the scope for this maybe a bit too big? Do we need... Should we be discussing maybe reducing the scope? 
student reducing the scope. What do you mean, Kevin? Say of more. The, of the project in general? Are we trying to do too much in this project? I think the point is, should we maybe, instead of having a gigantic list of everything we could possibly have for education, maybe we pick the top 10 things that we want? Yes, and thank you, Don. Start with that. Is that what you meant, Kevin? Yes, thank you. Any other comments or input on how we can encourage people to participate? Okay, thanks everybody. We only have two minutes left, so we can move this to next time. I don't know if, it looks like Matt hasn't really gotten a chance to clean a lot of this up. So we'll just talk about it next time. No big deal. Hey, Elizabeth. Yeah. Super quick and not in sort of tangentially related to the mission of the DEI group, but uh, I've been looking at doing a book club within my own organization on this book called Invisible Women. It's oh. kind of fascinating. So I just for whatever it's worth, I'm sharing it with this group since you're all DEI interested and focused and there's some really interesting stories and studies. I've only read two chapters so far, but it really brings home the idea that DEI is not just a label to slap on something, but that it requires very intentional designing. There's a, the second chapter is about gender neutral bathrooms and a study that was done in a theater that tried to hop on the DEI bandwagon and make gender neutral bathrooms, but didn't think through it and actually made things worse overall. Awesome. Thank you, Rhea, for sharing. I it's worth in case other, I don't know if anyone else has heard of this book or not, but it's really pretty fascinating. I have not, but it feels like super um, relevant to this group on many levels, specifically with regard to data and also then the DEI side of things. So thank you for bringing that up. Let's drop that in the minutes. Um, At least so far, I haven't found a chapter with an open source focus. You know, it'd be really interesting if there is actually one. Maybe we could contact the chapter's author and say, hey, you should feature the Chaos Project. Hey, your, there we go. In, in your sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Further studies in gender bias. Oh, I love it. Thank you, Rhea. That's cool. Oh, there you go. Kevin cites it in his computer science history class. Very good. Nice. Yay. All right, we are actually uh, out of time. So thanks everybody for coming. Thanks for all for your input and your um, experience and sharing everything with us today. Um, I love you all. I hope you all have a great day and we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.